So, John, this is big news for fans of virtual reality gaming. Oculus did just announce this new headset. Let me show it to you guys. This is the Oculus Rift S. So it's a PC-powered uh, VR device. It has a higher resolution display. It's got an improved lens, even stronger uh, visual clarity. It's going to launch officially in the spring, and it's going to cost around $399. I did catch up with a Facebook executive and Oculus co-founder, Nate Mitchell, and asked him what exactly is going to excite consumers consumers about the Oculus Rift S. Take a listen. So if you're out there and you're looking for sort of the, the highest, highest end of VR gaming, you're, you're going to be tough to beat uh, the Rift S experience. Um, Rift S over Rift features a much higher resolution display, which obviously makes the whole image a lot clearer and more immersive. It also features you know, our Oculus Touch controllers, which give you a natural sense uh, of real hand presence, being able to reach out and interact with the virtual world around you. Now, it's not just new hardware. Oculus this morning also announced some new VR games, one called Beat Saber. So this game now optimized for the Oculus Quest, and you guys can see me there playing Beat Saber and showing off my amazing VR skills for America. Now, how big is this market? Well, actually, it's still relatively small. You know, I checked in with a longtime tech analyst, Bob O'Donnell, over at Tech Analysis Research. He actually just completed a recent survey. He checked in with around 2,000 gamers. Bottom line, only about 6% of U.S. gamers right now have a VR or an AR headset. Uh, Donald says there's a couple reasons for that, but one challenge, he says, there still just isn't enough compelling content out there that really motivates a lot of gamers all around the world to go out and buy this hardware. And I actually ran that argument by Facebook's Nate Mitchell, and he agreed. He acknowledged that's an issue. They need more compelling content. At the same time, he said that's exactly why the company keeps investing in in content. Guys, back to you. Josh, were you playing Beat Saber there? Is that, is that what we saw happening? That, yes, that is indeed, John, me trying Beat Saber. I can tell you, um, You're you know, like I'm a little embarrassed to admit, there. I was out of breath, John. I, I, I broke a complete sweat on that game. I don't know if that says more about me or Beat Saber, but it was a, it was a workout. Well, you, you won. We're, we're just going to say that you won. <laughs> it was worth it. Now, I, I wonder, you, you gave some that. interesting stats there in the end of, about uh, VR and AR, how it's not catching on. It seems like the gaming industry is bifurcating. On the one hand, Google is trying to do this streaming thing, which requires less hardware, zero hardware, cheap hardware. On the other hand, Facebook still and others still trying to push this expensive VR. It, is there a sense of there being a tipping point? when they're going to figure out whether this is going to work in VR or not? Yeah, I think that's such a great point, John. So we were here yesterday, and you're right, with that Google streaming service. You know, we actually checked in with Google's uh, Phil Harrison, and, and that was exactly his point. He sort of said, leave it up to us, and we'll stream that uh, AAA graphics intense games right to your device, your phone, your tablet, your TV. Obviously, this is a different tack. And which one really ultimately takes off? We'll wait and see. Obviously, VR and AR are very different experiences. And then on top of that, you got tech companies taking a totally different role. You know, I know, John, you've done a lot of reporting on Microsoft and HoloLens. And when that company talks about HoloLens 2, you know, they're not looking at gaming. They're actually telling you what it can do in the enterprise, how it can help people in, in companies. So we're going to see how this space all plays out. Josh, I know we're talking about this new Oculus headset in, in terms of gaming and what it'll mean there. But I've, I've come in contact with a number of these uh, in more, you know, maybe some more unusual settings. Industrial companies, factory floors. I was actually with a logistics and transportation company just recently that's looking to use these uh, to demonstrate the services that they offer to their potential customers. It seems like there's much broader applications. Well, you know, that, that's an interesting point. Um, you know, so I mentioned I talked to Oculus co-founder Nate Mitchell. And my, my question, Nate, was, listen, there could be some right now, though, Morgan, who think, really VR seems kind of narrow and deep. And what I mean by that is, is it for hardcore gamers and kind of training simulations, a deep uh, but narrow audience? I asked Nate Mitchell that. He sticks to his guns that uh, basically long term, they don't think it'll be narrow and deep. They think it's going to be broad. They think it's going to have a lot of applications. That's their forecast for this device. That's why they're putting so much money and time into it.